and welcome to this video on AIM user profiles. Now, one of the beauties of the AIM Race Studio Analysis software is you can change the experience based upon what data you want to be able to have a look at. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a session um, that we've done um, previously in many of our um, examples and we've got our lap manager that is here. Um, we've got um, information in the measures graph and if we go to the left hand side and start picking our laps, we've been looking at lap 8 and lap 12 as part of this comparison. We're back to a very similar view um, that we've used in previous uh, examples. Now, one of the things that's interesting here is that this is a view which uh, for many of us is our default go to if we want to be able to see quick information uh, when we're at the track. So one of the things that we can do is, you know, always keep this view um, for ourselves um, so that we can always refer back to it, even if we change up and look at different variables that we're going to look at today. So we're going to use this tab at the top called user profiles up here on the left. And based upon this view we have here, we can name this anything we like. So today uh, I'm going to call this uh, basically the basic setup. Um, and you can see and type it in there. It says new user profile with all the current settings. Absolutely, that's what I want to be able to do. Um, and um, I'm going to click there and it's created this for me. Now, right now, um, that's just a reference point and it's now logged as to saying this is the view that I want to be able to have. But one of the things that we've looked at is um, graphs and let's say the GPS uh, position on track as well. And that's one of the key areas that people like to look at um, uh, as they assess their performance. And so uh, I'm going to go up to the top again. I'm going to click on GPS and that's going to open up this tab down here. So typically so far in our analysis, we've either said this is what the measures graph looks like um, or this is what the GPS looks like. But what we can actually do is we can have both of these on the screen at the same time. Now, word of caution, this does fill up the screen real estate. And so you don't want too much because then the graphs or the maps may get arguably too small, depending on the size of your laptop or the screen you're using. But the larger your reference screen that you're looking at, uh, the better opportunity you have of being able to line up interesting information. So I find the easiest way to do this is to actually um, click up here and um, size the windows. Now you can see that uh, having previously um, worked in this scenario before, it's actually moved the, the tiles around for me, but I can put these anywhere I like uh, based on what I want to be able to see. So for the purposes of today's um, scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move them around uh, slightly differently. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want some space. So I'm going to click on the space bar to get rid of the measures uh, bar on the left hand side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the uh, map over to the right hand side over here and I'm going to move the measures graph here to the left hand side. And so now I've got both of these screens together. So what I can now do is I can compare the data together. So for example, if we wanted to have a look at this performance in turn one, I can also zoom in um, to turn one at the same time and be able to look at that particular set of data that is here. Interestingly enough, the other thing that happens is that the cursor follows uh, the map as you go around the track. So you can see at which points your, your, um, you know, your graph is referring to on the actual track itself. And so a lot of advantages in terms of creating this layout, but we want to be able to always be able to go back to this. And so I'm going to hit the space bar again, and that's going to open it up. Now it's shrunk the uh, map for a while, but if I hit the space bar again, it just goes away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here is I'm going to click on this button here for create a new user profile. And I'm going to say here graphs, and map. A new user profile again with the current settings. I want a new one. I don't just want to create an empty one that I keep saving as I go. I want to have uh, one saved in terms of the view I'm looking at here. And I'm going to click on OK. Now I've got two user profiles that are available to me. I can assess the data this way if I want to be able to do it. And I could do this with all other of the windows and the tabs that we have. I think personally, this is one of the easiest views to be able to have a look at. But at the same time, if you wanted to be able to bring in variables such as the channels report um, or additional information about the vehicle, lots of information can be added at the same time. But for the purposes of today's uh, demonstration, we're just going to use these two. If I hit the space bar again, first thing I can do is to be able to say, well, hold on a second. I want that quick view. I want that graph view. So if I click up here, 
you can see that they both exist. If I click on this basic one again, it's going to take me back to that original setting. So now I've got this view whenever I need to be able to have it. And you can have this for many different types of view. Uh, oftentimes, especially if you're capturing a lot of um, channels, let's say you've got a lot of vehicle channels where you're looking at setup or engine temps or variables uh, such as suspension, you may want to have a view set up for the vehicle and then have a separate view set up for the driver. All sorts of different types of scenario. But in this case, I'm going to hit the spacebar again. You don't have to do this spacebar thing, for example. I'm just doing it for the purposes of screen real estate and, and this demonstration. But uh, again, that's up to you because you may want to be able to select your measures and your laps and be able to adjust it however you see fit. Um, you can go back into user profiles and I'm going to click on graphs and map. And if I click here, it will do what we just looked at earlier. Again, disappear with the bit on the left hand side to give us a lot more space. And there we are. That's the view that you have. Now you may be saying, oh, that's brilliant. But what if I want to be able to add more to that particular view? So again, depending on the view you want to be able to use, that's totally uh, uh, up to you and something that you can do in the software. So I'm going to go back to uh, the basic view. And uh, there it is there. And I'm going to go back to measures. And I want to be able to add in a little bit more information here. So GPS longitudinal is brilliant. Down means braking, up means accelerating, or a great proxy for that. And so that's useful. But I also want to be able to have a look at lat long, which gives me an indication of left and right. So I'm going to add that in. You can see it adds that chart into the overall view that is here, which is great. But I want this as part of my basic setup. So I'm going to go back to my user profiles. And I'm going to then, instead of loading up the basic one, um, this obviously deletes it if we don't need it, I'm going to click on this little save button. If I click on that save button, now it has saved this view for the basic um, uh, profile that I've created. And now if I toggle between the two, if I want to go to graphs and maps, I'm going to see this view, which just has the speed, the GPS longitudinal, the time distance, and the graph on the right hand side. But if I wanted to be able to go back and now look at that enhanced um, basic setup, here you can see that I'm now back to that view, but it's now added in the GPS lateral acceleration as well, which is useful. I want to have a look at that. You can have as many of these profiles as you like, but it's a very useful way of being able to create your own experience and your own custom view in the AIM software and really make it uh, something that you use specifically for the way that you like to look at data and work with it. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please also leave a comment below if you want to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.